Hi everyone, it's Lily. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am greatly appreciative of your support here on my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to do a little show and tell. And I've got a few things to share with you. First, I want to start, start by sharing some of these goodies that my sister brought me over last night. And as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, I am currently out of state and I traveled with zero crafting supplies. And so I have been slowly building my stash here. A lot of it from junk and found items, but also my sister sharing her stash with me. And so she came over last night and I've gone through all of the items. And because I'm recording with just one hand, I thought it would be easier to take everything out of the bag and the packaging just so it's easier for me to show it to you. And I'm going to do my best to keep the camera as steady as I possibly can. So thank you so much. Please bear with me. I am trying, but I have also put it on my to-do list to get my tripod fixed. <laughs> so I can show you both my hands. Okay. So she came over and she brought me over some doilies. I did some coffee staining over the weekend, so I may do that with these. So these will be fun to use. And then look at these sales orders, you guys. These are these were a great find. And look at the little stash that she brought me. So that was generous of her. And they are in black and in red. I believe they may be like the duplicate copy. But this is what she was really excited about because they're from 19-something. And so this is super nice. I don't have to coffee dye them. They're already patinaed. And those are super nice. I can't wait to work with these. And then she also brought me some of these little notebooks from her stash. And they all have different covers. Some of the pages are blank. Some of them have um, calendars to fill in. And some of them are for bullet journaling. So you could see here a little calendar. They don't have dates, so you could fill in your own date. So these are super cute. And um, these have little dots for bullet journaling. And some of them are blank. So that is really cute. And so I can't wait to play with these as well. I may, I may take one apart in coffee diet. Look at these stickers, you guys. These are so cute. Super cute. I think she said these are from Hobby Lobby, just from their own store brand. But I can't wait to play with these super cute little lady stickers. So set those aside. Here is, here are more. I think these are tags. Yeah. These are little tags to use, but you can use them any way you want. So these these will be fun to work with. That'll be nice. So thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Here are some tags. Super cute. So I will use these as well. And aside from, from um, I mean, I'm always happy to receive um, items like this because not only do I work on albums, junk journals, but I also like card making and scrapbooking. So I put all of these items to use. And here is a stack of recipe cards. I think these are from Dollar Tree. She's had these for a while. So thank you for those. Look at these cute little postcards. She said these are also from Hobby Lobby. Super cute. So these are all the same. And then they come with an envelope envelopes so those will be fun to play with and then these little tags or not tags these are little pockets I don't know about you guys but when the when I click record on my video my mind goes numb and I forget words so bear with me please <laughs> um 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 yeah that's me sometimes but aren't these super cute these are like little pockets little envelopes so cute so these will be nice in, in both uh, scrapbooking, pocket journaling, card making, or even my journal. So I will play with these and put those to good use. And she also is shared with me half a package of this pattern. So that's fun. I like using these. Well, I've, I've seen them. I've not used them, but the paper is thin enough to be able to use for, um, for collage. So that'll be fun to do. And then she gave me this little photo album. She knows I am a huge Mary Englebright fan and so she saw this at a thrift store and she knew I had to have it so that was very nice came with photo corners and then each you know it's just for adding pictures so I will put this to use because I have been printing some of my pictures and I will add them to this great little book and I like the way it folds out it's like a 
concertina, like accordion style. Look at that. Isn't that clever? So I can use both sides of the album, but I love it. And it is Christmas, but yeah. I'll use it all year long and put it um, where my other albums are for sharing. But isn't this super cute? Super cute. I love it. Okay. So these are the items that she has shared with me. Thank you so much, sister. The other thing I want to do, uh, share with you are these junk envelopes that I have been making. So I'm here at my mom's house and my parents' house. And I have been going through her junk drawer and she has been saving all of her junk mail envelopes for me. And that's, that's basically what I've been creating with. And then items that my sister has shared with me, um, old books that I have found. And when I say old books, I mean books that I have found in the garage that have water damage or are coming apart. And so I have saved them to repurpose them uh, for collage. And so that's what I've done here with some of these book pages. And I and these are junk envelopes. So these are two window envelopes that I have glued together at the flaps. I took an old Atlas book that was uh, water damaged and literally falling apart. So I took some of the pages, collaged them. And then on this one, I left a pocket there and there is an opening up here. So this was fun. And I want to tell you, I've been working well. Let me go back. I know I, I get way ahead of myself and start going really fast. <laughs> um, I've been working with junk, junk, junk envelopes for a while, and there's tons of inspiration on YouTube. Um, but I remember, gosh, back when I was um, fresh out of high school, making envelopes with calendars, with old calendars. My mom remembers that, and she may even still, she may still have some of those envelopes, but. But this is new to me and uh, maybe a year now actually working with junk mail envelopes. And I have, I've I've been having a ton of fun being creative and trying to work with these, um, keeping them from the trash bin. But lately I have been binge watching The Bohemian Crafter. You guys, she is, in my opinion, one of the best paper crafters out there in YouTube world. YouTube land. She is a genius when it comes to paper crafts. What she can do with envelopes is will just blow your mind. She is so creative. I love her style. I love her work um, and her personality, her laugh. She is worth watching. So Bohemian Crafter, she is amazing, you guys. So follow her. These envelopes I worked on this weekend, and because I've been binge watching her, I just put it on YouTube and I got to work with these envelopes. So a lot of these were inspired by her. So I just crafted along with her. And so these, yeah, I owe all of this to her. And I know I, I kind of put my twist on some of them, but she was the inspiration behind all of these junk envelopes. And so here is one, and I'll set these aside. I know they're all kind of crazy all over the place. And here is another envelope. This one I thought was pretty cool. And how she, um, it's just one junk envelope and then folds it down, creates a pocket here. And I believe these are two envelopes that have been glued together back to back. What's nice about her videos is she has a playlist where she does envelope crafts. So you can just go to her channel and I'll link, I'll link her, uh, in the below. So you can go over, but you can check out her playlist and she has a channel just for envelope crafts. And, but even if you watch her flip throughs, you can, you can see everything that she's created and she shares everything that she does. And so you can craft along with her. So here is this envelope. And then I worked with, um, some heavier cardstock that was gifted to me and then some old book pages, little some of it is packaging, some of it is coffee dyed paper, avocado dyed paper, whatever I have been able to get my um, my hands on. And so here's some more collage and I did a pocket here. So that was pretty cool. Okay, and look at this. Um, this, I saw this in one of her flip throughs. I caught a glimpse of a corner tuck and it was just a large envelope and I kind of figured out what she had done. Just a large junk mail envelope and I just kind of collaged it. So I will be gluing this um, to use as a corner tuck. And I love that the window is there. And then there is, there's another large one here um, that I also did. Oh, well, I, th I thought I had two of those. Okay, so here is another junk envelope. And I just collaged it 
with everything from just the papers I can get a hold of you guys. Just whatever I find. Coffee dyed. Pa I think this was a packaging, brown packaging. And then I distressed it. I did go to the store and purchased, I purchased a distressed oxide so that I can do this. But I'm trying to keep myself away from purchasing anything and just working with found objects so that I'm really um, challenging myself. I have very limited tools. I have a pair of scissors. Um, I have um, just barely a, a cutter that um, was thrifted. Uh, oh, I did buy one, a cutter on, on sale. But super limited supplies, you guys. And I don't want to purchase anything. I just want to create with found items. Again, I did a little pocket with some packaging and then stamped it and distressed it. Coffee dyed. I've been coffee dyeing here at my parents' house. So here is a coffee dyed envelope. And this will go in an album. I'll just insert it and it'll have, so it'll do this and it'll have two pockets. Um, here's another window envelope. So super cute. So yeah, check out the Bohemian Crafter. This is... Oh, this is, it feels really heavy. This is one of the heavier envelopes that come in the junk, in the junk mail. It was yellow. I just covered it. Again, found paper. This is also packaging. So old book pages, avocado dyed paper. Here are some pockets. These are double pockets. She has um, a tutorial on how to do these double pockets. So you could see. And I haven't glued them because I, not until I find a book. And here I don't have um, a punch to do that. And so all I did is I folded this gently like a soft fold, a soft fold. And then can you guys kind of tell what I did? So I did a soft fold and then clipped it with my scissors to get that little notch right there. But these are fun. She also shows you how to, you know, how to create these double pocket envelopes. So you can see that there, old book pages. This is from that atlas that was literally falling apart. Created some double pockets here. Double pocket from book pages, double pocket. Here is, what was this? Oh, two junk mail envelopes, window envelopes. I trimmed them down just so, um, just to make them more interesting. And I glued the flaps together. And there is an opening an opening here and then there is an opening oh up here and then I just added this tab and this tab I made um, using what did I cut this oh there's a heart punch and so I kind of created this notch with a heart punch yeah so and just collaged it again with found papers packaging packaging yeah and uh, some some fun scissors that my sister brought over. So here is an, another one. Oh, here's the larger uh, corner tuck. See, it was an envelope, but I will be gluing it down so you won't see that back part. And then just added a little tab here, but these are so clever. I love the window envelopes. So, and then here is, this one was actually totally inspired by the Bohemian Crafter. And so how she does her, her, um, she uses, I think it was packaging and then just wraps it around a tag to get the folds and then just cuts it and folds it over and glues it down super easy. And then I just added book page inside to give it some interest. So that is that. So yeah, go over to the Bohemian crafter. You guys are going to fall in love with her and all of her, um, amazing skills over the weekend. I also did some. I coffee dyed some paper. There is a ream of paper that I found here at my parents' house. And so I have been coffee dyeing it. And I tried a new technique. I usually bake my coffee dyed or avocado dyed paper. But I just recently watched a video with Artie Mays. And you can go over to Artie Mays' um, YouTube channel. She's also an, another amazing crafter. Um, and she does coffee dyeing uh, a little bit differently and so I, I used her technique just kind of brush on the coffee and then she stacks all of the pages and lets them air dry and so that's exactly what I did so I did not bake these at all and they turned out amazing 
This one is super dark because I put these out to dry in the sun. And this was the very top paper. I mean, they were literally all stacked together. And this was the very top one. So this one came out super dark. And I've heard that if you sun dry your papers, um, they'll get this darker um, shade. So that is what I did. Also, Artie Mays, um, aside from using tea, um, I, uh, tea or coffee, she also uses sprays and inks, you know, and she says, use whatever you have. And that's exactly what I did. So these are coffee dyed, but I also here at my mom's house, let me tell you what I found in her laundry room. I found a bottle of Rit denim blue. So I took a drop of this and put it in some water. There it is. And I kind of just splattered on some of the pages. If you watch her video, Artie Mays' recent video on coffee dyeing, you will see how she incorporates the blue into the tea dyed or the coffee dyed paper. So some of these pages do have um, some blue in them. Oh, and I think I focused on the blue on the school paper. But it's such a, it's very subtle, really subtle. And, but I like, I like the dimension in the colors. So, and then the lighting isn't that great in here, but there is a slight blue hue. Oh, here's some. You could see there. But it turned out amazing. So go over and watch Artie Mays' video. So here's, so the base is coffee dye. And then I took the brush and just kind of loosely splattered some of that blue ink here. And it, I think it turned out great. So, and I got that from Artie Mays. And so that is what I did here. Did lots of coffee dyeing on yesterday. On yesterday? <laughs> okay, the other thing I want to show you guys, and I mentioned it in one of my previous videos, is the way I used to store my old ephemera. Um, and back in, I started rubber stamping and scrapbooking in the, in the 90s. And I mean, when I discovered paper crafts, not paper crafts or rubber stamping, I should say, because prior to that, for example, like when I was in high school, I was using just hard cereal boxes and bits and pieces of fabric. I had no idea that rubber stamps and, um, existed. So, and then in the nineties, it just exploded. My, my scrapbooking just kind of took off. So I needed to find a way to store all of my things. And what I did is I purchased these two inch ring binders. These binders are old, you guys. What are we, 2020? 20, 20, and so I think I created these in the late 90s. So these are over 20 years old. And it's just a two inch binder. And I left these, these are here at my parents' house. Um, when I moved to California about 10 years ago, I left these at my parents' house and I gave them to my grandkids. So. Um, they have gotten a hold of these because it's theirs now and they've added stickers to the front covers. But I want to show you, this is what worked for me over 20 years ago. And I think I may want to do this all over again because it's just a great way to store ephemera. And you could see here, like when I, when I traveled and, and, you know, took my kids to Disneyland, Legoland, I would get the, I would purchase the postcards and I would just, I would purchase these photo uh, pockets and very similar to what Becky Higgins does now with Project Life. And this is pre Project Life, you guys. Um, this is, I don't know, 20, 22, 23 years old. It's a long time ago. And so I would, this is how I would store it. And so when I needed something, I would just flip through my page and, you know, go through whatever it is that I had. And I would just store things away in the pockets. And I just, I want to share this because even though these, these books now belong to my grandkids, now, right now that I've been in the mood for creating, I'll go through the book to see if I can find anything that I can use right now. And so, but it's, it's a nice little flashback to do, you know? So, okay, so I'm going to stop the video right now and do this as part one, and then I will do a part two and continue the flip through. Thank you.